Okay, thank you for staying so late in the afternoon here on a, a Thursday to see this developer's guide session on how to build uh, agents. I'm uh, Jeremy Thake, and I'm glad you're here. You're gonna see a lot of exciting demos today on how you can build agents that is kind of a fast follow to what we did in May at Build with a similar developer guide session. I'm a group product manager inside of the team in Redmond, uh, working on the Copilot Developer Experiences team, and the people we're gonna have on stage have been deeply involved in us, and so we're really looking forward to seeing the feedback and the questions on this. Uh, for those that are online or even in the room, you can use Pubble to ask those questions, and there's a bunch of people in the front row uh, which will be actively answering those as we're going through this presentation. Now, you've probably heard a lot about Copilot this week. I had a partner that I said I wanted to meet with, and I said, you meet me at the Copilot booth. It took 30 minutes for them to find me, and I figured they could have been a little bit more direct with the Copilot terminology there. But when it comes to Copilot and agents, the way that we think, really think about this is, is that Copilot really makes the agent experience more personal to the user that's inside of Microsoft 365 Copilot and working inside of BizChat in the various different hubs that we have. But then the other thing is, is that agents actually bring more capabilities to the Microsoft 365 Copilot itself. And so whether that's knowledge or skills or automation, those agents can bring that additional thing into that experience. And with both of those things together, we really do think about the notion of security, governance, and management as well. And that's something that us as Microsoft treat as a very exciting thing and very important to you as customers using this tool versus some of the other options you might have in this AI space with your teams. And the really important thing and why we're here today is that you can all build them. And for this week, you've probably been overloaded with Copilot Studio this and Agent Builder that. This session is talking about Visual Studio and pro developers because we are way cooler than makers. <laughs> You're gonna be seeing a lot of code today, but what I wanna do quickly, we just walk through some really good examples of partners we've been working with through the private preview, the public preview, and general availability. Um, a big thank you to all of our partners, but we have cherry-picked a few just to show here. And so the first one is Vantage Circle. Now Vantage Circle actually um, has built an agent where it's a very common thing. We do praise internally, and who have we not given praise to in the last 30 days? And their agent will list those people off, and okay, well, what has he done? What has he actually done within project-wise? And then it's gonna ask, okay, well, can you create me a, a big praise cycle in two sentences that I can then post um, into this system uh, very, very easily? So it's a common thing that we actually do internally, um, um, and Vantage has done a great job there with this agent. And again, you can app mention it, you can launch it from the right-hand rail. LexisNexis are a, a legal company with an agent called Protiage, and uh, you can ask it what legal questions you can ask. This model is very specifically trained to help lawyers in what they do on day to day. And the question they ask is, you know, what is the, uh, the tenancy disputes in the, the Californian law? And it's listing off all of those laws and the different claims that you have. And obviously, as you'd expect, lots of citations to reference. But then he specifically asks, okay, well now I need you to help you with authoring a particular um, clause around residential leases in California. And that's gonna go away and render that clause and you can go and grab that and put that into whatever document you're working on. Now Isertis is another example of an agent and their agent's a great example of something we're talking about this week, which is the ability to have agents directly inside of Word. In this case, I can select a particular sentence in the Word document. I can ask the agents to tell me whether that clause is acceptable or not, on, and it actually makes some suggestions where it'll actually go and edit that document for me and update it based on its understanding of clauses. And it can even look at the entire contents of that document and tell me all the different things that might not be appropriate within that document and allow me to track those things and assign them to people as I go in that in the agent, right there on the right-hand side in the flow of your work. So just great examples here of not just using these things in BizChat, inside of Teams and Office.com, but also directly inside of Word and, and our other hubs. And then lastly, you may have seen this in the keynotes at Build, but Adobe did a great job with Adobe Express as well, using this in Word. We all struggle with making our documents engaging and easily good to read, and sometimes you just wanna put a graphic in there just to kind of pull people in and draw people to read the, watch the document. And in this case, they've selected the contents of that first paragraph and asked Adobe Express to suggest an image that we could put in there. And the nice thing is there, you can actually just go directly go and click insert, and it will bed that image directly into your Word document. So just great ways you can see that agents are improving the kind of the inner loop that you're doing with building your documents, building your emails, building your conversations that you're doing inside of BizChat. So a big thank you to all the partners for everything you've done there. We really appreciate the efforts early on in the cycle to come with us on this journey in building agents. And we want you all to come with us too. 
Now, you would have seen a build, we called these things co-pilots. And in September, we now renamed these things to agents. We wanted to align to the industry because it makes more sense. And we also wanted to make sure that we kind of skate where the puck is going in the sense that we know that the agentic capabilities that you're going to be expecting in the future is something where they're actually desiring to do at the moment. And some of the demos we're going to show today will actually go into this step. The basic retrieval agents essentially allows you to kind of retrieve information based on grounded knowledge and respond and summarize directly into your copilot. But you've seen already in some of the demos we've done to, uh, this week that agents can go action and call out to external systems or even your own line of business systems to do things on behalf of your user. The more advanced scenarios that we were announcing this week is more of that autonomous, asynchronous thing that an agent can go plan a set of tasks for you to go do um, and do those under the covers without you having to have the user interacting with the interface at all times. And you'll see Aitja demo that in one of the scenarios later on. And so we see that as kind of a gradual story of where you would start with an agent and how you can incrementally add and improve and eventually get to that full autonomous agent interaction that you have. Now, at Build, we showed a slide that kind of explained the differentiations of what an agent architecture is. And we've evolved the slide based on feedback and based on where the product's gone. Essentially, an agent has our foundational model, whether you're building a declarative agent or a custom engine agent. And it has an orchestrator that's running that taps into that knowledge, taps into those skills, and taps into the autonomous processes that it, can, it has those capabilities to do. And it may or may not have a user interface. Now, when we talk about this, we can have multiple agents that are running inside of business chat or teams and other channels that you, your users might be engaged in. And there are two main options. You can build on top of Microsoft 365 Copilot, and we call those things declarative agents. Or you can build on top of your own custom engines, and we call those things custom engine agents. Now, with a declarative agent, those work right now in Microsoft 365 Copilot, and coming soon, those will also work in Teams. I'll be able to app mention a declarative agent directly there in a channel or a one-on-one -on -one chat. Custom engine agents currently work in Teams directly on web channels and other channels such as Messenger and Slack and so forth. And we're actually working in active progress to make sure that those work inside of Microsoft 365 Copilot too. So a user doesn't have to differentiate between whether they're using an agent as a declarative one or a custom engine agent. They'll just be known as agents across all of our hubs. And as you've seen this week, you can build these things with Copilot Studio. But if you're really cool and you're a developer and want to write things in code, you can use Visual Studio. You get where the theme's going with this. Now, declarative agents. Uh, effectively, as you mentioned, is uh, using this architectural stack where it's leveraging all of the Copilot stack. Um, so the model is based on the BizChat model. The orchestrator is based on what we call Sydney and have talked about in previous events. And then it's using the user experience inside of Teams or inside of Copilot BizChat. With declarative agents, you can give it instructions to kind of really steer how that agent in, in, interoperates and works with your users. And it can have grand information from Microsoft 365, but it can also have it through things like graph connectors. And then it has the notions of actions and capabilities to really tailor that agent to how you want it to work for your users. So what Seb's going to show is a bunch of new things that we've come up with, uh, which we're announcing at Ignite. And rather than me go through this, it makes way more sense for you to demo it all. Mike. There it Hello. is. Hello. There we go. Yes. Awesome. Hi, everybody. My name is Seb. I am a product manager on the um, tooling team around the M365 Copilot extensibility. And today, I want to walk you through an agent that I built. So the agent that I built was fully built using Teams Toolkit. It's meant for project management experts that wants to kind of understand what's happening in their projects directly in Copilot. Um, Products are directly connected to GitHub. So how do we build that? First, you go to Teams Toolkit, you create a new declarative agent. I won't go through these steps. We're just going to dive straight into the code and see what we can do there. So let's start. Teams Toolkit will create you an M365 app or a Teams app. And that Teams app will have one new capability, a set of copilot agents. These copilot agents are pretty simple JSON files that you reference as part of your Teams app, making sure everything is bundled together, and will automatically create some really cool capabilities. Let's go look at that. So first, it's going to create a nice file. That file has a name, a description. That's all what the user will see. It has instructions. The instru the, those instructions are the heart 
of that AI app, of that AI agent. What does it do? It provides context to the agent to make sure that it knows what to do, how to do, who the agent is, how they should behave. Let's look at an, an instruction file. So here, that's a type of instruction. That's a very simple set of instructions. You can have way bigger instruction set. But in this case, it was actually enough for building this entire scenario that I'm gonna show you today. So a couple guidelines, a little bit of a personality, maybe the tone in here. And sometimes you wanna be more specific, and that's why there's a little bit more into that. So the first capability that is added to the, um, to the mix here is web search. One of the new things we're announcing at Ignite this year is the fact that not only you can ground your declarative agent inside the web, but you can also now decide which website you want to ground it on. So in this case, it's only grounded on the documentation of GitHub around issues. How do you handle issues? So that's the first thing. Second thing that we're adding here is we're adding OneDrive and SharePoint. OneDrive and SharePoint, you can add some specific URLs to specific sites where your M365, your agent, will automatically be able to be grounded in that content. So if you have a site with project statuses, in that case with my GitHub uh, agent, that's gonna be perfect because you're gonna be able to ask questions right there. And finally, that will also have code interpreter. I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later on how cool this is, but this literally allows you to run code inside BizChat. To top that, we wanna be able to access external data sources. We wanna be able to go to the GitHub API and say, hey, provide me with all the list of issues that I might be assigned to, or give me all the list of issues for my entire uh, project. So this is done through actions inside um, our declarative agent, and it's um, modeled as what we call a plugin. What is a plugin? A plugin is a set of functions. If you've ever used anything in AI around function matching with a majority of the frameworks, you're gonna recognize that. It's a name. It's a description and that helps Copilot understand how to map the intent of the user directly to the action. So when somebody says, assign this task to Jeremy, it's gonna automatically be able to know which function to call inside the API. But can you really do that without auth? Because auth is easy. <laughs> um, auth, in that case, we're leveraging some of our uh, underlying capabilities um, in Teams Developer Portal, where you can securely uh, make these uh, APIs available fully logged in, so the user needs to log in the first time, and then afterwards, we're gonna renew the token for that user. But all of that needs to be um, described as an open API file. And this is really where the glue comes into play. You have an API, you describe your API in an open API file, and the plugin does the matching between these things. So what's in my open API file here? Well, I have a couple of endpoints. One of them is to list a bunch of issues. Automatically, Copilot will be able to replace all of these parameters using um, um, its knowledge. We'll be able to match and uh, um, put everything together with the plugin. And also what is really cool is that there are some parameters that are optional. So based on the intent of the user, for example, it will be able to understand that, hey, by the way, I wanna get just me. So I'm gonna automatically filter it by the, the person that is assigned to these issues. So what I suggest is, let's go see a little bit how these things could work. So the first thing here is summarize the latest weekly status. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna start with the best practice here. Um, I'm just gonna run some of them. Wanna make sure we're not into demo. Uh, I don't have any demo issues, but here we have um, a prompt. What are some best practices in issue management using GitHub? That was automatically grounded inside the web. And we can know that by, at the end, because I have a ton of different citations. Those citations are coming exclusively from the GitHub, the GitHub doc set. So that way you're, you're confident that this data was not made up, but also is grounded in what you really care about. The second demo is for content. So here I ask, summarize the latest weekly status. The latest weekly status is a document that sits 
directly inside SharePoint, and it gives me now a, a, a small summary and a file. I won't click on the file because I already have it open, but that for me will be useful a little bit later to show you some app chat and um, uh, go out in office capabilities. Then afterwards, what are my issues? Let's go live. Simple intent, simple query. Now, Copilot will ask me, hey, I'm, I want to connect to GitHub, but I need to send some information to GitHub. Here it is. I need an owner, I need a repo, and I need an assignee. It figured it out by itself. I didn't have to provide any of that. It was all uh, able to actually assign it. And now I can just click allow once, it's gonna go, and I can show you the result of that just so we don't have to wait. And I'm gonna get a nice table back directly from my API. So now you can do the retrieval directly through these really ma magnificent API that GitHub has built. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's do, based on the issues from the GitHub agent, visualize the data as a pie chart grouped by assignee. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna query the API, we'll bring the data back, and we'll take that data, create a Python script on the fly, we'll generate an image, a visualization of that data, and we'll put it straight back into, get in, into, uh, um, into my agent, into Copilot. How cool is that? That's amazing. I haven't coded anything for that. I just enabled the code interpreter capabilities, and that's there. And if you want to see the code, it's all there. It literally really executed Python code, Python code on my behalf. That's really cool. <laughs> yes, a clap. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, Seb got one. <laughs> it's going to be a competition. Um, so the last one I want to show is, you remember that project file that I discovered earlier using that prompt around my, uh, the weekly status? Here I have my project update status, and I can go here and I can say, hey, you know what? I want to get the current issues from here. I can, here I am in, in Word, and I have Copilot on the right, and it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to get me the data, it's gonna list all of that data, and it's gonna allow me to take the response directly from that Copilot experience, and I'm gonna be able to embed it straight into my Word document. So you're gonna be able to start researching, getting content, and automatically mashing it up with your most productive tools. So I can just go here, I hit insert, and now boom, I have a really cool um, a table that was just automatically added. To finish, I can now do that, and I can go here, I can say, assign this task to JThink. No, we don't do that. Yes, and I can add this selection. What it does, it adds the context of the selection in Word. I'm gonna send it, it's gonna automatically understand that it needs to assign it. It's one of the actions, the skills that I um, created. It's gonna tell me, hey, I wanna assign the issue number 10 to JThake, I'm gonna hit confirm, and it's gonna do it on my behalf. So now we really have that bi-directional capability straight into your um, office productivity tools. I'm just gonna change it back to you. Uh, thank you very much, Jeremy. So, hope you enjoy it. It's all live, you can already play with all of that. Have a great uh, rest of the night. Thank you, Seb. There we go. Thank you, we are demo heavy today, so we're gonna move on. So, we showed declarative agents that you build on top of Microsoft 365. Let's talk about custom engine agents. So custom engine agents effectively have been generally available for a while now with Teams AI library, and Aitch is gonna do a demo in a moment for us to talk that through. If we go back to this agent architecture, the difference between a declarative agent and a custom engine agent is effectively that we're not just thinking about doing these things uh, where we're leveraging the orchestrator of a biz chat, and we're not leveraging the foundational model. You can bring your own, and you can bring your own knowledge maybe from Azure AI, and you can bring skills from other things externally um, plugged into the Azure AI Foundry stuff too. And so that's the benefit that you get with Custom Engine Agent. That black box gets a lot more open and you've got a lot more control over what you do. And we want to give that choice to you as a, as a developer. With the updates for Ignite around Teams AI library, we've improved some UI user experience inside of the Microsoft Teams interface. We're going to have the ability very shortly to deploy directly into BizChat and have Custom Engine Agents work within that BizChat experience and also have proactive notifications. And so again, the best way to just do this is just to have Aicha do the demo. Thank you. Okay, three.
Okay, let's get started. Okay, the demo bar is so high after Seb. <laughs> I hope you will all enjoy this. So let me introduce you Career Genie. Career Genie is actually a custom engine agent built using Teams AI library. And we will first test Career Genie on Teams. Okay, so we'll start with hi, and the first thing we will recognize is authentication. And Career Genie is actually using single sign-on and handle some automations with Microsoft Graph. So we definitely need that. And we can first ask, what can you do? And see, have a closer look actually the experience. So we see that it's a HR related agent. We have some UI goodies. We have thumbs up, thumbs down. We can share feedback. and. Uh, we can also ask more complex questions than just this. We can say, suggest me .NET developers who can uh, speak Spanish. And because Career Genie is powered by Azure AI Search, it's connected to Azure AI Search, it can apply vector search on top of the diverse set of resumes. And as you see, we've already got really uh, good candidates for us. We can create a list of age, uh, a list of um, a a li list of um, sorry, candidates and add, let's say, Carme in .NET developers list. We can also say like add Arnel in the same list with Carne, and we don't have to define which list. And then we can summarize the list and finally we can send our list to HR for scheduling interviews. In that point, Career Genie will just call Microsoft Graph and we can quickly go ahead and check our Outlook and see our email is already received. So. Uh, Career Genie is basically powered by Teams AI library, but I want to quickly walk you through how the code looks like before we jump into the next session. So, as I mentioned earlier, we are using Teams AI library. We have the core components of Teams AI library, such as model, we have prompts, we have planner, and also we are using two different prompts to make everything work. The first prompt is monologue, the other one is chat. Let's quickly have a look at how those prompts look like. The first one is chat is actually handling retrieval augmented generation with Azure AI search integration. We are applying vector search here. And we also have the prompts that is giving the behavior of Career Genie. In the monologue prompt, we have actions like add candidates, remove candidates, uh, et cetera, and we have all the rules for handling the actions. If we go back to app.ts quickly, we will see that uh, authentication is also defined inside the app. And we have feedback loop, for example, we've tried earlier, we have predicted say comment that uh, helps us with the citation and adaptive cards. And finally, we are defining actions inside our app.ai so our AI can utilize the actions when needed. So, um, this is pretty much it. This is what it takes to create a custom engine agent for um, Microsoft Teams. But um, what if I tell you that you can actually bring Career Genie entirely and you can use uh, the same sample code today? Um, it's open source. You can bring it into Copilot BizChat. Let's quickly have a look at that. I'll just use the updated source code of Career Genie. Exactly the same, but just small tweaks I added inside. Okay, so let, we are already running the code sample, but and as you can see, we have Career Genie agent already in Copilot inside, and we can ask the similar questions and see the experience. First, let's have a look at the behavior. It's exactly the same uh, Career Genie behavior with emojis and everything. We can ask, suggest me .NET developers who can speak Spanish, exactly the same question, and we will get very similar answer. answer. We have Carme, uh, as one of the um, suggestions, and that's totally right. Let me show you what it actually takes to bring this into Copilot. I just updated manifest.json. We only need to add Copilot agents and custom engine agents, and also we just add comments for zero prompt experience. And finally, it is suggested to enable streaming so we will have a better user experience in um, Copilot with custom engine agent. But that's pretty much it. So you can take the existing source code and start playing with it, with it. The only thing is that this feature is currently in private preview, but it will be available very soon. Awesome. Now, what you didn't show is the proactive agent. What can you show me about that? Okay, sure. So we have another demo built by Teams AI library team, and it's an awesome demo. I quickly want to walk, you, walk through that demo too. So 
uh, we have another custom engine agent here on Teams that helps business owner manage their coffee shop in, uh, inventory. We'll just start with using this uh, check stock levels and we want to learn a little bit more about the stock. And agent, agent actually summarizes the current stock levels and seems like we, are, we need to restock the coffee and we'll just ask agent to help us out. And agent will basically figure out how to do that. So now our agent understood that there, there's, a, there, there's things to be done and it creates a task and we have steps here. Just to give you a little bit of idea, the first task is done to check required uh, stock. And as you see here, our agent actually created other steps to follow to be able to restock coffee. So the next step, just to give you an idea, is check supplier inventory, and it's already started and it's in 67%. Okay, so let's say that we are, all, we are working on other stuff and our agent is taking process behind the scenes in the background, it's already working about taking all the related actions. And we receive a notification from our agent proactively. So it seems like Tailwind traders won't be able to deliver coffee on time, so it's asking me if it is okay to use other supply. I'll just say, okay, let's go ahead with that. And then our agent will continue doing the process behind the scene and it will just continue uh, working in the background to be able to restock coffee. And the final step for our agent is getting an approval from our finance and it will just go ahead and ask finance if this budget is okay and our finance team will just go ahead and confirm the order and our agent will be done. And when our, once our agent is done, it will notify us proactively again and say that, hey, we've just completed this task and here's the summary of uh, our task. And if we go back to the dashboard very quickly, we'll see that all the tasks it created for itself is already completed. So. This is something new we wanted to share about the custom engine agents and proactive actions, and we have a lot more in the agenda, so I'm giving back to Jeremy. Thank you, Archer, really appreciate it. <laughs> it's really exciting to see how quickly we're moving forward with all this stuff, especially on the Agentech stuff. Um, and I, it's been great to see the engagements we're having around uh, communicating with people asynchronously and leveraging the rest of our platform like Teams. It's, it's awesome. So with custom engine agents, uh, what we are also introducing today, if you've been a student reading the blog post, is Microsoft 365 Agents SDKs. This is the evolution of the Teams AI library. What this effectively allows you to do is take this even further. So you build your agents your way. You can essentially pick to build with Azure AI, or you can build other platforms as well. And it has seamless integration with Copilot Studio. You can start in Copilot Studio. You can bring the code into Visual Studio Code. And in the future, you'll be able to take that code and bring it back into Copilot Studio as well. So we're doing this byway sync between a maker and a pro developer, which as a SharePoint developer of old with SharePoint Designer InfoPath, where we had to start all over again with code, this is a great way we're gonna have that to and fro with the Agents SDK. And the real benefit of the Agents SDK is the fact that you can publish to multiple channels. Now, from the architecture side here, it's very similar to Teams AI library, except the difference now is we have lots more user experience, including things like a web embed uh, channel that you can go put into a site. Um, same thing, you pick your, uh, your orchestrator, you can pick where your knowledge source is and your skills and the autonomy that you're going on, and you can also select your foundational models as well. So this is really the evolution of Teams AI library, and it gives you that much more control than what you get out of declarative agents. Now, this is a real big partnership across the company, across Copilot Studio, the Semantic Kernel team, and Azure AI Foundry, which has had a lot of sessions this week in bringing this all together and working cohesively with the Agents SDK. And the easiest way to do this is to hand over to the architect that has built this thing. Thank so you. welcome all, uh, Matt. So I actually, uh, my name is Matt Barber, so I'm kind of the uh, oddball in this group. Uh, everybody you've talked to so far has been working directly with the M365 effort. I come from the Power Platform. I work under the Copilot Studio banner. Uh, in Copilot Studio, we typically talk about all the declarative capabilities we could do. We talk about all the co declarative capabilities in the Power Platform. We talk about declarative, declarative makers. And here I'm gonna show you something that is deep down and nothing but code. Uh, we actually do have that capability in the Power Platform and we're bringing it here to bear. We're also the stewards and the responsible parties for the bot framework, which is what the Teams AI uh, libraries are built upon. And what you're seeing is a collapse of the Teams AI feature set and the bot framework bringing together
to come together to produce the new agent framework and the agent SDK. Uh, there's been a lot of experience along the way. So what I'm gonna be showing you as I go through this, first off, I'm gonna warn you, this is live code. I am actually running this on my desktop. There's no video. We can break into Visual Studio, so we'll see what happens. The first thing I'm gonna show you is something related to Copilot Studio. So I'm gonna pop this UI open here for just a minute. And we're gonna look at a couple of different things. There are four different, in my demos here, there are four different bots. And I'm using the term bots, I'm not using the term agents because I'm being specific. There is open, an open AI service, Azure open AI service, and there are three different Copilot Studio hosted bots, independently built in different environments, okay? All inside the same tenant. The first one is a weather bot. It's the standard weather bot that you go get something. The second one is a bot that just does account management. And the third one is a, a Contoso assistant bot, essentially something that returns orders or manages orders, okay? The Azure Open AI service has been told to be able to answer questions about Microsoft and to handle order responses, not to be able to deal with weather or anything else, okay? Now, before I go too far into that, let me show you another interesting little capability here. I'm gonna start a console app. Now, this is an app that we're including in part of our sample. This runs today. It's available for you to use right now. Uh, it is a sample app sitting on top of a new assembly that we just recently shipped called the Copilot Studio Client. This is an assembly that allows you to directly connect to any bot that, or agent, excuse me, agent, <laughs> that is available and published inside Copilot Studio. In this case, it's connected to the weather bot. So as you can see here on the UI, I see what my user request is, um, what's the weather, do we really need to be rubbed in about the weather here in Chicago? I'm, I'm going to ask about it. I go C H I C A G O uh, and hit enter. Now, we built this particular demonstrator to illustrate a couple of things. Uh, you're going to notice that little dots are appearing before things pop out, and, and we'll get through that. You'll actually see this a slightly different way. And I'm going to ask the current weather, and I'm just going to pop that in and hit enter. Now, what you saw with the get current weather, get current forecast, uh, none of these, that was the suggested actions feature invoking, except in instead of showing an adaptive card, well, it can't because it's in a console app, it actually just printed it out as a set of document, or a set of lines. Now, there's a couple little things here, dot, dot, plus, what's going on there? Typing, typing, event, and then the message comes back. Now, I use that term event. In our API, we have the ability to tell you what's going on. So you want something to go trigger a behavior on a different screen, that's an event. That's additional content that we can trigger. You want to trigger Copilot to do something, you can send it an event. So here through the API, we're showing in this client, we're showing that in this console app, and you can crack the code open for that console app. Uh, it's deeply complicated code. Uh, and uh, let's see, here we go. Alt, enter, there we go. Uh, that is the code. Start async, and you see start a conversation, ask a question. That's the code. It is a streaming response system, so as events happen, it will stream responses back until it reaches a completion point. So unlike direct line, the legacy protocol where you would have to connect and then pull and cycle and listen, crap, I did missed it, let me keep going. This actually will continue to stream events back to you until that particular operation completes or you hit an alternate timeout. You can adjust that uh, depending on, you know, we, we set it, we default it to something like 30 seconds, uh, but it's a dial. You can adjust it to be bigger if you choose to do so. All right, now let's go do the other bot, which is more fun. So let's start with this. I'm gonna show this in two ways. What you're gonna see here on the right is the console output of a bot, uh, excuse me, an agent that I have running locally. It's gonna get beat into me or marketing is gonna kill me. We're gonna play a drinking game. Yeah. How many times does this bot? bot and... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> how many times does that happen, eh? <laughs> it took me years to stop saying CRM when they changed the name to Dynamics, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I've got here is test web chat. Now, in this case, we're gonna talk to two, uh, this, this we're gonna talk to three different things. We're gonna talk to Azure OpenAI, we're gonna to talk to a weather bot eventually, and we're gonna to talk to the product bot, okay? Now, we've 
altered the UI a bit, the response code a little bit, so you can tell the difference between what's actually talking to you. If we didn't put that in there, you wouldn't be able to tell which one you were talking to, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is tell me about Microsoft. Okay, so on the right, what you're seeing is the stream of, of events that are occurring inside the agent itself. So you received a conversation ID, we looked it up in the uh, local storage as far as that conversation record, have we seen this before, yes or no? Uh, nope, the history is a depth of three, it's one iteration. We went out and we actually talked to uh, OpenAI, uh, Open, uh, Azure OpenAI, and came back, and here is the response. Then I could say something like, uh, tell me, about Xboxes. Okay, once again, we're wandering out to the Azure Open AI space and we're getting a bunch of data back on Xboxes. Now I want to return something. Okay, I want to return my product. Now, something happened there. Two store events happened and now a, a separate set of events is occurring. So what happened was Semantic Kernel decided that that was something that was handled by a different agent. And that in turn invoked that same client that you just saw us use in the console app to communicate now with a Copilot Studio bot to process and handle the response back. There in the UI, you see a whack whack CS Contoso Assistant coming back. That's indicating that that response came from Contoso Assistant and not from Azure OpenAI. So we interrupted the, the communications chain, so we returned the response from the agent that took over control versus allowing it to go back through a planner loop. Okay, so that is Okay, we went back through the loop. We're back to talking to the Copilot Studio bot. Copilot uh, agent, Copilot Studio agent returned, and it gave me my answer back. Now, over here on the chat, you're seeing a couple of things pop out here. This is actually part of our diagnostic stuff. This is a, a, a unit. Uh, this is this piece of code is actually something that we're using not only to demonstrate the functionality, but also to test and optimize as we work through. So you're actually seeing the performance of those particular events occurring. Uh, in this case, that initial communication, the initial conversation setup, which happened up here, initially took a second, okay? Those are, these are numbers that we're trying to, to clean up and, and make tighter along the way, and this is helping us do that. But then when it began talking back, you see each event that it came back in the time cycle between those events. So in this case, it actually, in order to answer that first question here, it actually sent back six events, okay? A typing event, a bunch of events of the thought process that was going on inside the Copilot Studio agent, and then the return of the actual message itself. Okay, now I'm gonna change gears, and I'm gonna say, we're gonna use that weather example again. What is the weather forecast in Seattle tonight? Hopefully not windy and trees down. It but is windy and answer. trees down. I just got a picture from home and it is ugly. Okay, so there we go. We actually changed gears. So here's our conversation ID that we're tracking against Copilot Studio. And here was the other conversation ID. That's a different conversation. We actually went to a different bot. And in this case, the CS bot, specifically the, the uh, Contoso Assistant, is in one environment. The weather bot is in a different environment, okay? So if I need to integrate these capabilities across the environments, I can do that as required. I can also directly, in this case, for this demonstration purposes, I can directly address a bot. So in this case, I'm actually gonna use at notation, and I'm going to say BNK. This is actually uh, something that we did very, very quickly, I think, uh, Lewis, if he's in the room, we were actually on a call when we built this bot and attached it to this client. That's how fast this, this can actually come together when we do this. Uh, open, how do I open an account? Open an account. Okay. Now, the difference here, this particular agent, is configured, this particular code agent, is configured to intercept at notation, map that against a known 
agent, an agent collection, and then reroute the conversation to the specific agent versus sending it out to semantic kernel to allow semantic kernel to take a turn. Remember that I said that the bot was, uh, the agent was configured to understand how to talk to Microsoft and how to answer questions around product orders, nothing else. So realistically, it should have deflected this. But this is a capability that we have in a custom engine agent. We can override that behavior uh, at code level. So here again is an example where it connected to yet a third conversation. We have 80809. Up here we have Foxtrot 1 Echo. And a little bit further up, we have 403. Each one is communicating to a slightly different agent. And our, we're tracking the conversations independently. So what you're seeing here is the conversation from the source, the particular endpoint that's handling it, semantic kernel versus the alias for it, and then how we in turn respond to that. So in this case, semantic kernel is the root conversation, the web bot is the one that responded to that one, and a little bit further down, the BNK bot is the one that responded to that one, okay, for the agent. So we're able to stitch all that together. So let's take a look at the code. What is that all doing? And I was quite serious when I said it was actually running. So here's the, the mental dump of the system at the time. Let's go ahead and just stop it and take a look at the code. So we'll start with the, yep, got it. We'll start with the uh, front door real quick. I'm just gonna touch on it very, very quickly. I'm almost out of time. Uh, this is deriving, as you can see up here, Teams Activity Handler. So if you're familiar with working in .NET for dealing with custom engine bots, that's the Teams Activity Handler. Uh, that's actually part of the core now. It's not a separate library you add in. We have an on message loop, and through the on message loop, we have, this is our interceptor. That's our interceptor code right there that's handling the overall. And this is the code that in turn drops down into the semantic kernel area and constructs a set of plugins and sends it through. These plugins are actually what are dealing with the routing logic. So in this case, we've configured the orchestrator to handle the routing logic. I need to move on because we're almost out of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back. Okay, so let's see that. So what you just saw happen there is this diagram. You had the agent itself, the actual agent, utilizing semantic kernel, because that was the choice that we chose to use in this case. It doesn't have to be semantic kernel. You could be using Autogen, or you could be using the Teams AI planner. Uh, you have a lot of capabilities in that regard. Uh, at the end of the day, we routed things up to semantic kernel. We let semantic kernel make decisions and move things on. All right. And we'll go ahead and continue to move on. At the end of the day, the intent behind this, this framework, and as the intent you've experienced with the, uh, uh, with the Teams AI toolkit in the past, is to allow you the flexibility to make the choices that make most sense to you to deliver the service and the capability that you need to do from a code first point of view, okay? That is the capability we expect to continue. We want to continue to invest in that, make this easier, make this better, and move forward, okay? I'll awesome. Back to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Matt. So you've seen a lot of code. You've seen a lot of demos in this session. Um, and one thing just to continue to kind of reiterate is we are providing a path to move forward. If you're using Teams IRA library now because it's generally available, that is something that you will continue to be able to evolve into the agents SDK as we move forward in the, in the future. So if you're looking to do things in GA, we recommend you're using Teams IRA library for now, but this is public preview in the agents SDK and you can get started today and try some of these demos that Matt has demonstrated. So thank you so much, Matt, for that, those demos. Now, we've talked a lot about building agents both on top of Microsoft 365 Copilot and also building on top of your own custom engine, engines as well, um, both in Copilot Studio and Visual Studio Code. So your options effectively is to kind of tackle those with Teams AI Library and Agents SDK in custom engine or continue to build on top of Microsoft 365 Copilot with those declarative agents that Sebastian showed. You can get started today at aka.ms slash build agents. And we have an incredible amount of developer content in our developer advocates team, including Aisha helped write. Um, I did them last week. The demos that Aisha showed around the Copilot Genie, it took me a few hours to go through that and really get to understand the code. Um, it's really step-by-step -step instructions. So if you have an environment, it's very, very easy to go get learning there as following those dev, dev camp um, content. And there's some great videos to kind of walk you through it as, as well. So please, transform the way your customers are working. Go take Copilot, if you've invested in it already, and take advantage of everything you're entitled to by building agents on top of those things for all those different business scenarios that you can imagine. 
and do them in pro code in Visual Studio. Um, we really appreciate your time today. I um, appreciate all the questions on Pubble. Thank you so much. And please enjoy the rest of Ignite.